Hello, it's Jason here again, and this is the second video we're going to be doing about burning, this time with planar magnetic headphones. And the last video, mistakes were made, and I learned a lot. I've uh, read all the comments, and I'd love it if you could comment on this and let me know your thoughts on burning and what we've got right, what we've got wrong, all that kind of stuff, what you've experienced, whether it's nonsense, whether it's not. Thoroughly looking forward to a fight in the comments. I am burning agnostic, you know, it can't hurt. <laughs> but I don't believe it's gonna change the world. But uh, I read through the many, many comments in the previous video and I jotted down a couple of notes. So I read through all the comments on the previous video and it was really interesting and a lot of it, everyone kind of fell in to two main camps with some agnostics like myself, where some people going like, ah, oh, definitely heard it, you know, 100% believe in burning. And other people saying, no, it's total nonsense and I can prove it and, and all that kind of stuff. So it was really interesting. Uh, some people had some questions about the setup, which wasn't quite right, and uh, yeah, I've, I'm going to try and address those in this video. But yeah, it'll be interesting to go with planar magnetic headphones, see what we can do. So uh, before we start, I'll just go through some of the things that I picked up on the comments on the previous one, and see if I can play devil's advocate to some of those on the plus and the minor side. So in the four camp, it's nearly all anecdotal. Obviously, there doesn't seem to be very much scientific evidence for it, but a lot of people were saying uh, that, they, that they really noticed a difference. And certainly they were saying that older headphones will sound often better than a brand new unboxed pair. So you're very used to an old pair of headphones, it breaks, you buy another one, the new one doesn't sound as good initially. That would mean, that could mean that burning is real. That could also mean that things have changed. I know from pulling apart headphones that designs change subtly over time. Molds wear out, they have to make new molds. Design and manufacture changes ever so slightly. So the headphones look the same on the outside, but there's subtle changes on the inside that could affect the sound, which could be why you're used to the sound of a pair from 10 years ago. The new pair will have changed ever so slightly and you might notice that and then it's up to you whether you decide it's better or worse but in your, in your you know from the placebo effect if you assume it's going to burn in is real you're going to think they don't sound as good initially and then you're going to kind of get used to the new sound so i think placebo definitely has something to do with it you know if you believe that burning is real you're probably going to hear something and that's not necessarily a bad thing you know it's all about enjoying the sound and if you enjoy the sound more after it's been burnt in even if that's because of the placebo effect why not enjoy the sound more you know do it it's gonna it's gonna make you happier the other thing the main thing in the four camp i think from my point of view is that materials have things like sn curves where their stiffness changes after a certain number of cyclic loads and then kind of level up so you've got things some things like aluminium which is very bad for that kind of thing and it will gradually fatigue over time until eventually it breaks whereas steel will fatigue to a certain point and then it will kind of stabilize which is why steel is really good for springs aluminium not so good for springs um so there are some materials certainly i assume the diaphragms that they make these things out of don't gradually get worse and worse over time but they may have a little initial point where they're stiffer and then loosen up and then stabilize so that might be what what's going on with burning so in the against pile you've got big one there's no measurable results out there at the moment that aren't within margin of error what i'm going to try and do is reduce some of that margin of error with a bit of engineering and the other thing is subtle changes to the graft within margin of error are audible so it's, it's you know if they're very subtle changes and it's arguable that it's uh, uh, just margin of error or there is a subtle change so uh, again that's all kind of up in the air another one that several point people pointed out is that when you people are evangelizing about burning you never get people say i got them initially and they were great and then they gradually got worse it's always people uh, they started off bad and then got better after some burning and some people were like that's a bit suspicious but playing devil's advocate here i have designed a lot of headphone bits to, to tune them you know i have to listen to them design these parts to to make them sound what i think i, I think sound better and every headphone designer does the same thing they're going to start off with a, a model and they're going to tweak it and tune it until it sounds about right for them and their their testers and i've spoken to several headphone designers and they would not do that testing with a brand new set of headphones i wouldn't do it either whether i believe in burning or not it can't hurt to let them burn in <laughs> and then do the testing which means that all the testing and tuning will have been done for most headphones with a driver that has had a certain amount of burning so it will have reached that steady state so that could be why they don't sound worse because the tuning has been done for that steady state burn inness 
uh, as opposed to the fresh out the boxness. So that's that's my devil's advocate bit there. Uh, another one was like, if it was an important thing, wouldn't the manufacturer do that before they ship them out? And uh, in fact, they do. Odyssey, uh, if you have a look at some of the videos on YouTube of Odyssey factory tours, they've got a big cabinet where all their drivers are set up and burnt in before they go into their headphones, before they do all the final testing. So yes, a lot of manufacturers do burn in, especially on the high-end headphones, they'll give them a burn in before they go out. You know, I'm not saying it's real. I'm just saying that they are convinced enough that they've got a dedicated cabinet worth thousands of pounds to do it just in case, because it might be real. The other one is it's more than likely going to be the pads breaking down or things moving on the rig. And I thought that myself. Uh, the previous video with the HC25s, many people noticed that they had moved on the rig. Now then what, what had happened is I'd done an initial test and found that they weren't sealed properly. So I got out a fresh pair and redid it, but it meant the first half of the video and the second half of the video, they'd shifted slightly and uh, I didn't make that clear. So, uh, and I'm gonna try and stop that from happening to stop any, uh, what's it? But yeah, pads changing changes the sound. So as pads squidge down, that changes the sound. That could be what you're hearing with burning. When you get a new pair of headphones, you know, the pads are all super floofy and then they, they kind of settle down. That affects the sound. It affects the distance from the ear. It affects the density, which will affect the airflow, that kind of thing. So pads affect the sound a lot. Pads changing over time is definitely a thing that burning could be as opposed to the driver. So, and then just things I've got under both, you know, both for and against. Uh, it shouldn't really matter which camp you're in. Basically, the placebo effect is very real and has an effect on us. So, if you're in the burning camp, 100% keep burning in your headphones. It's the placebo effect alone will help you appreciate the headphones more. And people that uh, don't currently believe in burning, the pl as you know with placebo tests, even if you know it's a placebo, it still has a positive effect. So again, it can't hurt, you know, it's all about the enjoyment. You know, if you believe that that it's not real adamantly and uh, it's gonna upset you burning them in, don't, don't do that. <laughs> Just enjoy them straight out of the box. As I've mentioned before, it can't hurt, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, you're not harming anyone by burning anything in. Uh, it's not gonna make it worse in any way. There's no downside to burning it in other than wasting a day or so of listening. And if you let it play overnight, you're not, you're not even doing that. So it can't really hurt. Um, and I think I will probably keep doing it uh, just in case. <laughs> it can't hurt. What we're gonna do to try and get this a bit more scientific and take out some of the external factors. What I've made is this, which is a rigid mounting, which is gonna go on there I've taken the pad off some headphones, so it's gonna hold it on the rig in the same position. It can't move, so that, that's a thing. And the pads can't deform because it's a solid, solid ear pad, essentially. What I'm also gonna do is before, uh, when I was doing the HD 25s I put the HD 25s on the rig and then got everything set up. So it did a couple of frequency sweeps while I was getting it set up, which might, you know, if burning is in the first 10 minutes, psh, it might have it might have affected it you know if it's got a more noticeable effect early on that might have affected it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set these up with my headphones get all the levels right uh for the tests then i'm going to open a box fresh pair and then do the test with them so that they've had no sound going through them before the test uh other than any any basic testing that they've done in the factory but as these are a cheaper one the he 400 se which is their entry level model you know, I don't think they will have given these that much love in the factory. <laughs> they turned out very cheaply. They can't have sat on the shelf for hours. And that is why, um, you know, I was saying some of the more expensive ones are burnt in in the factory and the cheaper ones aren't. It's because it's time. It's time in the factory. Time is money. But uh, anyway, so that's, that's my methodology. Let's hope we can get uh, a, a convincing graph and see one way or the other. So uh, let's start off by setting all this up. Okay. So we've got that there. So it's relatively stopped to the stand, which is pretty good. And we're gonna do an initial thing. This is just to get the levels right, which should be roughly the same levels for those. Uh, so we'll get generator 300 hertz, minus 20 decibels, go, SPL meter. We're looking for minus 40. So turn the volume up a bit. Uh, so that's sort of minus, 39 minus 40 decibels on there. Okay, so that means that the amp and everything should be set up 
the right level, roughly. For a box fresh pair of these. So let's get one of these open. Don't worry, I'm not being ugh, super frivolous. I've got a modifier pair of these. Uh, I've got a pair going out with the with the fancy super grills. So whoever gets these will have a freshly burnt in pair, which is uh, yeah, an additional service they haven't paid for, which is a, a bonus, isn't it? <laughs> Again, exceptional packaging. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove one ear pad. Go on the rig. Right, okay. Now then luckily, this is a bank holiday weekend, so I won't be in the office for a couple of days. So what I can do is I can take a measurement now, and then I can let these play pink noise for a bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let them play for maybe 15, 20 minutes, take another reading, let them play for another hour, take another reading, and then I'm going to bugger off out in the office and uh, just let them play for a couple of days. I'm going to play pink noise, which is a noise made up of all the normal frequencies that most music is made up of, as opposed to white noise, just in case. Uh, and I'm going to let it run at a medium volume for a couple of days, because other people said that 24 hours isn't long enough and that music isn't the best thing. Like, I suppose with pink noise, essentially you're giving them all the frequencies constantly, so they, they it's gonna burn them in quicker than uh, so so I suspect you know two days of pink noise is probably the same as four days of music so let us uh, take our initial measurement <laughs> And there we go. So that is our initial measurement. So that is our graph and it is not great, but <laughs> I suspect that's because we've got this rigid mountain. It's really affected the sound uh, on those. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let those play pink noise for sort of quarter an hour, come back and do another test. Then we'll have a look at that. Then uh, pink noise probably for a bit longer, do another test and then for a couple of days. So uh, leave it with me. Okie pokey, it's been playing for about 15 minutes, uh, let's just take another measurement. And it is exactly the same, is it is exactly the same? Let's have a look. Yeah, it's exactly the same pretty much. Uh, that's good, that means our little thing here for run to run what's it is working, it's like super almost the same much closer readings than we were getting before. There's, there are actually some subtle differences, but yeah, yeah, it's pretty much, pretty much exactly the same. So nothing major has changed. Yeah, that's no, really nice. They pretty much line up perfectly on top of each other. So that's good. That means our rig works. And it also means that certainly burning in the first 15 minutes is, <laughs> is not a thing. Unfortunately for you, but uh, fortunately for me, James, our other technician, me and him, we've been working on a on a car, on a drift car, race car kind of thing, and uh, yeah, just got the call saying it's a sunny bank holiday weekend. Do you want to come and do some wrenching? And I'm like, yeah, that sounds better than listening to pink noise for an hour. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to let this stuff play over the weekend, and then I'll come back. We'll do another test after sort of 48 hours. In the meantime, I'm going to go and bust my knuckles on some wrenches. What? what? Right, cool. I don't know if you can hear that. Can you hear the pink noise? Uh, <laughs> let me just stop that. Hold on. Oh, that's better. Uh, just, just so we're all caught up, I started this going at about 12 o'clock on a Friday. It is now 2 o'clock on a Sunday. So these have had roughly 50 hours of pink noise running them in. And, you know, that's continuous use and it's pink noise. It should, you know, that should be enough, I would have thought. To loosen these up, 50 hours is, is quite a long, quite a long time, and obviously it's playing all the frequencies at a sensible volume. So now the exciting part, uh, because of the rigid mount, it won't have moved on the thing. The pads won't have changed. We've had 50 hours of burn in. Uh, when we did our test, a couple of minutes, uh, about 15 minutes after it started, no real changes in the frequency response. So it is time to run another test. I'm vaguely excited. I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. <sighs> Ah, uh, yeah, there is a little bit of something something. After 50 hours of burning with these, you can see you've actually gained a couple of decibels in the bass. So they roll off about 60 
hurt still but you can see you've got a decibel or two more in the in the lower bit so what we have is the red line is the original reading and the blue line is the reading after 50 hours of running pink noise through them so that's the main noticeable thing there's a couple of little bits like up in the high end a few things have changed subtly as well so the mids have stayed roughly the same you know there, there's definitely more change there so that's a uh, let's just recap just so we can we can do it so this is the original chart this is the chart after 15 minutes as you can see basically nothing's changed which shows that our rig is working and that you're getting a res you know a test to test decent lineup because there's no movement and there's no pad squishing and then if we bring in our other one there is a noticeable difference that's interesting uh, just for completeness and science I'm going to run another test now to make sure that we're still you know measurement to measurement the same the temperature is roughly the same today there's not a great deal of, you know it should be roughly the same yeah and that's exactly lining up with our other measurement that we took what I might do is give them an hour to cool down in case they've got a bit warm and then we'll do another test so I'll do one more test we'll let these cool down just in case it's that the driver's got a bit warm because it's been running for 50 hours and that has affected the sound um, so if we let them cool down then I do another test if it does perfectly overlap with the other one that we took today then uh, there, there might be it might be there I don't know there might be something in it okay so this is it it's about three o'clock they've had an hour to cool down if it's a temperature thing let's just do another test to see what ting up one that's the really exciting one yeah it's an exact match with the new reading hmm so I've got my flame retardant pants on and my fighting gear on let, let me know what you think it's, does this prove that it's real is this is, is burning on planar magnetic headphones a real thing have we, have we done it is it real I don't know I don't know like I'm still gonna burn them in uh, before I test anything just because just in case you know but yes let me know what you think seriously join me in the comments I'm gonna try and reply to everyone I will fight you <laughs> I'm going to try to reply to everyone. So, uh, yeah, stick stick some comments in, certainly for the first week. I'm going to be in there. Let me know what you think, because the other video was really helpful. I had loads of people that had some great suggestions, which is how we came up with this rig. So let me know what you think. What have I done wrong? Uh, what have I done right? Uh, do you think this proves it? Do you think this disproves it? I don't know. Like, the changes aren't massive, but there's definitely, like, in the base on these things, a subtle change and a few subtle little bits and bobs up in the very high frequencies seem to have changed but when we were doing you know within an hour of each other whew, spot on so i think the measurement rig kind of works there doesn't seem to be any kind of run to run variance with the rigid mounting let me know what you think fight me in the comments i want to see the comments comment on it now also subscribe do it you buggers